What's going on guys? My name is Tan. I'm an amateur astronomer and in today's video I want to show you guys how I use the Aurora Pro to capture awesome footage of meteors. This camera has been my go-to for the last year and a half and it's made stargazing so much more enjoyable. Even though it has its limitations, I still consider it one of my most valuable tools when I'm out under the stars. Buckle up because we're going to do a pretty deep dive into this camera. First, I want to say that this thing is not a, it's not a toy. It's a big investment and it really is a gnarly gadget. If you're someone who is considering picking one of these up, especially for astronomy, this video is for you. Let's make sure we have a battery and SD card in the camera. So under the electronic viewfinder, there's going to be a little tab right here. Pull in the direction of the arrow and you can pop this piece out. We're going to take one of the batteries and it's just going to go right in here. You'll hear it click. We're going to take our micro SD card and insert it right in this little tab here. And then you'll also hear that click as well. And then put it back in. There we go. Over here, we have the mode dial. The dial turns the camera on and off as well as to set the camera mode. We have photo, video, loop, playback, and the Wi-Fi and settings. On the top of the camera here, we have the record or take a photo button. Above it, we have some directional buttons for navigating and accessing advanced settings like zooming in or adjusting the exposure. We have a manual focusing ring here at the end. And then right below it, we have this scene ring. You can toggle between day, twilight and night. Down here we have the charging port you can just pull out on this tab here and then there's your standard micro USB. On the bottom of the camera we have a standard quarter inch thread and a diopter adjustment button on the side of the electronic viewfinder. So we're going to turn the dial to video mode since our main focus is to capture real-time footage of shooting stars. So we're going to go over two clicks to the right. The screen will turn on whenever it senses you. So when you bring this up to your face, it'll turn on in here. All right, so let's go through some of these icons here on the display. This is what you're going to see whenever you look through the eyepiece. Here, it shows you that we are in video recording mode. Uh, this number here is how much recording time we have left. In this case, I can record up to about a little under 14 hours. We have the current time, the direction the camera is pointed, and our GPS coordinates. I just have mine set to off, but you can easily turn it back on. Down here, we have the exposure compensation. I usually leave it on negative one or negative two because I find that it looks the best for my specific area. Now, I'm in a pretty light polluted area, portal six to be exact, but I may need to increase my exposure if I'm at a really dark site. So depending on where you are, this is uh, something that you'll want to play with, but I do find the results are really good the lower it is. So don't be afraid to play around with the exposure. Over here, we have this icon and it's just telling me that I have stabilization turned on. It's really good if you plan on holding the device. Otherwise, you can just leave it off. You can also turn on the HDR or high dynamic range mode. In general, it cleans up the footage. However, when pointing at the sky, I don't notice a difference. So I just leave it off. 24 frames per second is going to give you the most clean footage. And lastly, we have the Wi-Fi indicator along with the storage and battery life. And that's it. This is pretty much what I always leave it at. The only thing that changes is the exposure compensation. And again, that's going to vary depending on your location. All right, so now that we are familiar with the interface and we have our settings dialed in, we just want to make sure that we're in focus. So when we're out on the field, we're going to look for a bright star in the sky and we're going to focus until the star becomes as small as possible. For most of you guys, that's going to be as simple as adjusting the focusing ring to infinity and it'll actually stop. You won't be able to turn any further. I recommend putting the Aurora on a tripod. It gives you still footage and it's really nice to have the ability to just 
set it somewhere and forget about it. You can hit record and just let it run all night. As you guys can see, it's pretty simple. Once you have the settings dialed in, you just turn on the camera to video mode and hit record and you are ready to go. Hope that helps you guys out. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'm wishing you guys the best of luck out there. Happy stargazing. Whoa! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! All right, it's in the field of view. We're just gonna go right in. Look how crazy that looks. Here, I'm getting some footage of you with the Milky Way right behind you. That's so cool. What is that? That's the second time I did that. Ghost of Jupiter. Wow, that's pretty gnarly. So that's a planetary nebula?